Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is Perry Roubaix 2024. Today's race, 260 kilometers and 29 cobblestone sections. We know the big favorite, Matthew Vanderpool. He's on the first page, the only page with the only rider on it is Matthew Vanderpool. Keep that in mind from Albacine to Koenig. We start looking at the second page. Even the second page is pretty thin. Mads Pedersen's really the second page. Normally he had some company with Matteo Jorgensen, the American rider, but he's out sick for Visma Lisa bike. While Van Aert would have been on the first page with, of course, Matthew Vanderpool, but he's out and he's broken too, so he's not here. Now we start looking at that second page again. You go, well, Christophe Laporte's here, but the Visma Lisa bike rider's been sick. And on top of Christophe Laporte, they got another rider out sick because the past Perry Roubaix winner here, Dylan Van Barley, he's out sick too. He was supposed to start, but he's gone. So that means a lot of the big time favorites here at Perry Roubaix have already started to disappear. Now, if I mention Pseudo Quick Step, you guys are like, they're not on the first page, they're not on the second page. Guys, I don't know if you can put them on the third page here at Perry Roubaix, and I'll give you some examples as we get into the race here. When the race starts, attacks hit off right away. We're going to see seven riders break off with about 250 kilometers to go, 240 clay to go. Don't even worry about these guys. There's seven up there. Two more is going to bridge up to them. We're going to put nine guys in the front group. Now, in that group, though, keep, keep an eye on Casper Asgreen there from Pseudo Quickstep because I already told you I'm going to mention their team, team throughout the race. Right after we see the two riders break off from the peloton there, we're going to see the peloton go curb to curb. We see that it's Trek up at the front there. That's Tim DeClerc riding, and we see Albacine de Kunick riding. I'm not certain why Trek want to ride with Albacine de Kunick, but Mads Pedersen's on the second page, and he's pretty much on the second page all by himself. So we see those two teams setting some tempo. Then there's going to be a big crash early into the race. In the crash, take a look. There's Tim Miller in there from Pseudo Quick Step. This is going to wreck his day. And then when we look at some of the other crashes, Viviani's in the crash. Lawrence Rex from Intermarche, he went down hard and he's missing skin and clothing all on the left side and just knocked up all over the place. But the Intermarche rider will get back on his bike. We go back to the crash, we look over the right side of the road, that's Johnny Milan over there. He's upset at the photographer there and they're about ready to go at it, but we'll see my old teammate there, Gregory Rass, the director sportif for Trek, he's going to run in there, run over there and he's going to get in the way so Johnny Milan doesn't do anything that's going to get him DQ'd. He won't finish the race here for Trek though later on, so he's going to have a bad day after this crash and during this crash with the photographer wanting to throw punches, that's a pretty bad day too. Now we start looking at the break up front. Their gap is only at about a minute, minute 10, and it'll stretch out to about 130, but it'll take the two riders to bridge up to the Casper Asgreen break up there, about 45 kilometers they're chasing the whole time early in this race because the Peloton's not giving them any, any leash at all. Trek and Albacine are doing incredible work back there with just a couple guys keeping this front group of breakaway up here all wrapped up close and nice and neat. Now we come in at 29. 29th sector here of the cobblestone, that's sector number one if you're doing it in reverse. When they hit the first cobblestone section, Albacine de Kunick's all over the front. We see Mads Pedersen there. Right away, we're going to see Christophe Laporte have some problems. That's going to bring him out the back. Later, we're going to see him coming out the back with Afeni and having problems. So that's two Visma Lisa bike guys that are gone. And we're on the first and, section, first and second section of the cobblestones here at Perry roubaix and they're losing their two main guys. Okay, they still have the Van Dyke brothers up front, and they're putting on a pretty good show, and they have one rider in the front breakaway up there too. But like I said, that breakaway is going to get caught. So when we start looking at the next part of the section here at Perry roubaix start paying attention about 160 kilometers to go. That's Mads Pedersen in the front. Now shortly after that, you've seen him at the front through the first cobblestone section, and you see him there at 160. But then we lose sight of Mads Pedersen, the number two favorite here at Perry roubaix What happened to him? I don't know. But I know he's chasing back there because he's not in the front group. We get into about 150, 155 kilometers to go when the Peloton's already blown up in pieces all over. We're going to see the Trek, little Trek rider looking back at, at the back of the Matthew Vanderpool, Albacine de Kunick front group here. We see Trek looking back. That means for sure Mads Pedersen's in the second group. When we see the drone come down, we see Mads Pedersen's either leading this group or his teammate is and he's just in the back. We'll call it about 10 guys back there. They're going to bridge up with about 140 kilometers to go. 
About the time they bridge, we're going to see another crash coming out of the left turn from Lawrence Rex, the Intermarche rider that crashed in the first crash that was so beat up. He goes straight into the sign there that has the yellow pad on the front, thankfully, and he flips over the pad. Now what happened? If I back the film up, we go into the left, look at Lawrence Rex. He's looking over left at his teammates. And as we see the FDJ riders jump on the island and just miss the yellow barrier there, pad anyways, we'll see Lawrence Rex while he's looking left. He all of a sudden looks straight. It's too late for the Intermarché rider to do anything. He's flipping over the bars and he's going out of the race with two crashes here at Perry roubaix This was one of his big time markers of the season. I remember seeing his interviews earlier where he's talked about always trying to come in here as, one of, as being one of the favorites for his team, Intermarché. It's going to end right here with about 140 kilometers to go. Now, it's going to get pretty ugly for Pseudo Quick Step 2 because I saw Casper Pedersen get dropped earlier. And now, after the crash there of Lawrence Rex, we're going to see as the Peloton blows up in pieces, the two Pseudo Quick Step riders coming out the back. That's Eve Lamparts and Bert Van Leerberg there coming out the back. That means they've already had Tim Miller crash, and I saw him stop in the first cobblestone section. Pedersen's already come out the back, Casper Pedersen with a C. And then we see Bert, and then we see Eve Lampart's coming out the back. That's four riders already gone. I don't know where the fifth one is, but I can't find him in the front group. I only see Casper Asgreen because they're getting caught right now by the Peloton being led by Albacine de Kunick there, flying, flying through this Perry Roubaix. Now, this is about the worst kind of conditions you can have in Perry Roubaix. Some people say it's the rain. Okay, it is the rain for crashing a lot, but it's not the rain if you're trying to battle against the best rider or the strongest teams because the rain causes chaos, which separates the teams up and sooner or later some bad luck's going to happen. When you have these kind of conditions with crosswinds, if you had more crosswinds, it would be even worse. But crosswinds are about the hardest you can make the race because every time when you look at Albacine de Kunick through the first half of the race, through the first parts of the cobblestones, they're going in an echelon and the peloton's single file back there, which means nobody's getting a draft except for Matthew Vanderpool and of course his teammate Jasper Philipson who are sitting in the echelon all the time starting the cobbles. Everyone else is hit, getting extra win over Matthew Vanderpool, and he was already better than you guys when the race started. That's why we're seeing everything blow apart, and the Peloton's down to about 50 guys. Now, we're coming up to the most famous section with just under 100 kilometers to go. Of course, that's the Forest of Ironburg. When we come up to it, we see the little jig jag that they added in there. It's going to be a right, it's going to be a U-turn, it's going to follow another right. Now, this was a perfect way to slow it down under these conditions here today because you see the Peloton going curb to curb down the road. They're going wide. They're about 7, 8, 10 wide there. So that means they're only 3 deep because there's only like 35, 40 riders left right now because Albacine de Kunick have killed everybody in the crosswind sections. As we come into the right U-turn and then the right to start the Ironbird Forest, it's going to go in there with Madge Pedersen leading on the front. He's going to start drilling it on the front. We see Matthew Vanderpool in good, in good spot, about fifth, sixth spot there. He's solid. And then, of course, Mads is starting to drill it. We see Tim Van Dyke. He's going to pull off to the right. He's going to drop anchor because he's got a bike problem. But don't worry. He's got a twin brother, and his brother was sitting like fifth or sixth right there, right around Matthew Vanderpool. Now, as we're getting further up, things are starting to blow up. We're going to see Casper Asgreen, Pseudo Quickstep, come out the back here on the Armberg Forest. And that's it for Pseudo Quickstep. Guys, we're basically just under 100 kilometers to go. The most famous section just started. Pseudo Quickstep are no longer in the picture. We look at the front as they exit the forest there. Matthew Vanderpool threw in a big acceleration just before the end with about 900 meters to go. He comes out solo, but Madge Pedersen, number two favorite here, he's going to close up the gap there on Matthew Vanderpool. Now there's going to be chaos because we see Matthew Vanderpool, Madge Pedersen, Jasper Philipson's in this group, and about three, four other guys are in this front group, but then everything starts coming back together because Jasper Philipson's going to have a flat tire. Once he pulls over, if I, back the, if I back the camera up, there was flats all over the place. John Degenkohl, who was a winner here at Perry roubaix he's riding for DSM. He had a mechanical too. Jasper Philipson's going to get a quick bike change. And then as the second group was catching the first group that Jasper Philipson originally was in, we see nobody's waiting for Jasper Philipson. They're going to start throwing in attacks. But don't worry if you're Albacine de Kunick because you got Gianni Vermesh there who's covering all of the attacks while Jasper Philipson's getting some mechanical work and pushed back on his bike to try to get back up to the front group. Jasper Philipson will get on the radio. He'll pass Mads Pedersen. 
as he's passing Mads Pedersen, that's because Mads Pedersen's having a mechanical now too. So the full chaos after the Arnberg Forest right here with mechanicals, attacks happening left and right, but Matthew Van Der Poel's always at the front, always controlling everything, and he has the help of Gianni Vermesh there. As we see Mads Pedersen coming back, he's panicking. He's got his teammate Vasek there, and he's throwing his arms up because he can't find his car or he can't find the spare wheel. Finally, he sees the guy that has his spare wheels. He pulls over to the right, gets ready to stop, but he's still talking on the radio. When we see the fan come over and point straight over the shoulder there of Mads Pedersen, he's saying, hey, you got a fresh bike coming right here. Mads is going to forget the back wheel. He's going to change bikes and get back on his bike. Now, the problem is... Up front, Niels Paulette has thrown in attack, and he's got an FDJ rider, and he's got Gianni Vermesh with him. As Mads Pedersen's trying to close back up, he's got his teammate Vasek there doing huge work for him. Vasek was something amazing right here at this moment with about 85 kilometers to go into the race. Then I'm watching Peacock. Peacock shuts back, turns off the live coverage, and goes back to replay. Once they come back out of replay, who's on the front? This guy from Trek? I don't even know who, where this guy came from. Ed Toons, were you hiding in the bushes? Man, were you fantastic to get on the front at this crucial moment because Mads Pedersen and Vasek have pulled everything back together except for the three riders up front. We'll see Ed Toons throwing in everything he can as we start the next cobblestone sections, and then he's going to blow and he's done. Now it's time for Vasek to go back to the front. Vasek's on there pulling full gas. We see Pidcock do a little bit of attacking on the front, but that doesn't go anywhere, and then Vasek's back on the front. We come into the next crucial cobblestone section. Mads Pedersen's going to go into panic mode here because he can't quite close back the three riders that are in the front with Niels Paulet and Gianni Vermash up there in the FDJ rider. As Mads Pedersen attacks around Vasek, that's it. He's got no more teammates left, and we still got a long ways to go, about 70 kilometers to go. But Mads Pedersen will close up to the three riders in front. Once he does, everything's back together, and then we start coming in and we'll see a few more attacks until we get under about 60 kilometers to go. Once we hit the next cobblestone section, we'll see up front Mads Pedersen. He's near the front, but on the front is Gianni Vermesh. Vermesh is on the front, and Matthew Van Der Poel's going to start coming up the left side from about fifth position. Once he comes up the left side, we're hitting 59 point something kilometers to go. And keep that in mind because it's going to be important because Matthew Van Der Poel's going to throw an acceleration, and he starts going solo. Mads Pedersen's trying to close. He's doing everything he can but still losing second by second with every pedal stroke there on his bike as he's pushing hard. Now the gap gets out to about 15 seconds. Mads Pedersen looks back over his shoulder. Nobody wants to help. They're already racing for second place. Matthew Vanderpool is flying up the road. He is putting on a spectacular show every time the cameras come back to him. He's dicing it up through the left turns, through the right turns, cutting the corners perfectly, coming out on the grass section. At one moment, he came so close to the grass that it dropped into the gutter. I was like, whoa, you might lose it. You might lose Perry Roubaix right here if you don't get this under control. The gap's already up over a minute. We go back to the group back there, they're attacking left and right. When Mads Pedersen stopped, stopped pulling and looked back over his shoulder, Niels Paulette threw an attack. I don't know what he was thinking at that moment when he threw an attack. He still had his teammate Tim Wellens in this group. So they could have just gotten on the front. Their group was about 30 riders back there, but nobody wanted to work for the win except for Mads Pedersen. So you start seeing the attacks from UAE Team Emirates, and you see him from Visma Lisa bike that had two riders in there too. Now eventually what happens, we'll get a few kilometers later, about 15, and that's when you see Mads Pedersen follow the attack from Niels Paulette. He'll go with Niels Paulette, we'll see two FDJ riders make it, Stefan Kuhn and Pithy. Pithy is having a remarkable 2024 season. Not quite up there with Del Toro, but it's pretty spectacular. And then we look at Jasper Philipson, who's locked on. That's five riders in the front. We're coming up to 30 kilometers to go. We see Matthew Vanderpool having a little chit-chat with his car on the right side, but he's got a left turn coming up. His car gets out of the way just in time. Matthew Vanderpool makes his left. Now we go back and look at the five chasers, and we see that Niels Paulette's getting a little tired. On the front of this group is going to be Pithy as he goes into that exact same turn. Pithy loses the front tire. He goes down hard, bounces off the cobblestones, and brings himself straight out of this group of five to leave four up front. Now Mads Pedersen's not waiting for Pithy. He's still on the front pulling as hard as he can. Niels Paulette's kind of dying. Guys, he's had a rough, rough time here at Perry roubaix He was caught in that original crash, the big one, way back at the beginning before they even hit the cobblestones. And he's had some bike issues along the way too. So with just about 30 kilometers still to go, 
He's basically sitting on the back as Mads Pedersen's doing big time pulls. And then we'll see Stefan Kuhn. He realizes that he can't wait for Pithy because the group behind them is pretty close to Pithy too. And they only have about a 30 second gap on the third group back there if you consider the Mads Pedersen the second group. Pithy's doing everything he can. He's back up on his bike. And then we'll start seeing Matthew Vanderpool just solo and beautifully up there. Barely looks like he's touching the pedals. Every time we come back and look at the chase group of four now, they look like they're suffering left and right. The grimaces on their face is something spectacular to watch. And Pithy, Pithy's all covered in dirt back there, but he's going to get some company because with about 20 kilometers to go, we're going to see Gianni Vermatch. He's going to attack the group back there and go solo up to Pithy. Once he gets up to Pithy, he's coming by the right side pretty fast, but he looks over his shoulder, and I'm sure he self yells something like, hop on, man, I'll wait for you. He backs off the throttle a little bit, and Pithy gets back on his back wheel. Now up front, we're coming into the Care for the Labre, and this is where Matthew Vanderpool looks spectacular. Guys, he has never showed any signs of hurt right now, and he's still dicing up all the corners as we come through the last famous five-star section here of Perry roubaix Matthew Vanderpool, beautiful exec execution of the right turns and the left turns, and always in fantastic position. He'll exit there, and you know he's going to win Perry roubaix His gap's already up to about three minutes. We go back to the group of four, they're driving through this section, and then we're going to see with 12 kilometers to go, well, this is time for Jasper Phillips in to do some work. He opts on the front. Stefan Kuhn, FDJ, comes out the back. Now we got three riders chasing one Matthew Vanderpool. Really two back there because you know Jasper Phillips is not going to do much because that's his teammate in front, but he's going to do enough to make it where Stefan Kuhn can't kick, catch back up. We come into 1.5 kilometers to go. It's the last cobblestone section here for Matthew Vanderpool. He'll roll through this with ease. He'll enter onto the velodrome, and as he does his laps, he'll come across for the last time with a few hundred meters to go, sit up and celebrate another victory here at Perry roubaix back-to-back, -back, and he's done the double. Juan Flanders and then backed it up here with Perry roubaix victory. They have had a spectacular season, Albacine de Kunic. Let me remind you, they won Milan San Remo, they won Flanders, like I already said, and now they're winning Perry roubaix with Matthew Vanderpool. When we look at the back, three riders coming onto the velodrome here, they were coming in just as Matthew Vanderpool had already finished and was celebrating. As they get on the velodrome, Mads Pedersen's leading them out. He'll do the full lap at the front. We'll come into about a quarter of a lap to go, maybe just a little more, half a lap I'll call it. And that's when we see Niels Paulette throw in his attack. He drops from the top down to the bottom. Niels Paulette, you left the inside line open. Jasper Phillipson comes up the inside. He gets second here at Perry roubaix Mads Pedersen gets third. Niels Paulette from UAE Team Emirates will get fourth. And this time there won't be a disqualification like we saw at the Flanders where Niels Pallet got moved up onto the podium because Mads Pedersen did a fantastic job to get a podium and Jasper Philipson, of course, second on the stage to go back to back with his teammate first and second here at Perry roubaix Basically, they did exactly what they did last year, right? Now, when we look back, Stefan Kuhn held off the two duels back there to get fifth on the stage. Sixth, Gianni Vermesh will out-sprint Pithy for sixth. Seventh is Pithy. That means there's eighth left. Well, when we see eighth, what's happened? That's Tim Van Dyke back there. Tim Van Dyke starts his sprint, goes all the way from the outside of the velodrome, down and cuts through the velodrome. Guys, you can't cut through the velodrome. He literally cut all the way past the blue line there into the dark brown shot around, went all the way the lap around and end up finishing eighth, but he'll get relegated. So it'll be Jordi Mayus that wins the sprint back there for eighth to get himself a top 10. And Tim, well, there's always next season, I guess, if you want a top 10, because that was a ridiculous attack coming all the way from the left, right side of the right side of the velodrome all the way into the center and then try to go all the way around to beat the guys. Of course you can win if you cut the track. Uh, anyways, when it's all said and done, guys, Matthew Vanderpool is something spectacular. But keep in mind, Visma Leafs, a bike, have been hurting. There's no Wal Van Art. There's no Dylan Van Barley. There's no Christoph Laporte here. Jorgensen didn't make it. Pseudo Quick Step, those guys are off the map. They were dropped. Basically, every one of them were dropped with about 85 kilometers to go. Once Casper Asgreen was the last one holding on for dear life, he got popped. After that, they were done. And then when we look at Trek, remember, we got to go all the way back to those, those weekend races where we saw Trek have that massive crash. And of course, they lost Stoyvens in that crash and Alex Kirsch at Dorsdorf Vlanderen. So their team was way down on power too. It was still a remarkable Perry roubaix And when you look at what Matthew Vanderpool did, this is the kind of stage that you want to do it where you have the crosswinds and your team, Albacine de Kunick, who raced something fantastic 
at Flanders, and then again with a slightly different team here, raced even better at Perry roubaix But when you have the crosswinds and you got a few teams, especially big teams like Visma, Pseudo, Quickstep, and Trek, all underpowered, that's why we see a 59 point something kilometer solo victory from Matthew Vanderpool to win Perry roubaix in 2024. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next Butterfly Effect somewhere at some point in time for sure.